Hello, my name is Dick Roberts. I'm a professional photographer, videographer, and metal artist. In part one of this video series, I talk to you about what it is like to be a metal artist with a CNC plasma cutting machine. I told you what to look for when buying one and gave you helpful hints in using one, including setting up a simple design and cutting it out. In this, part two of the series, I'm going to go into more detail of the operation of the machine. I will show you how to set up a small shop, install a ventilation system, and how to have a shop and a cutting room working together in two different locations. By the time you finish watching this video, you should be able to feel comfortable in setting up and using the machine and being able to take care of the upkeep of the CNC machine. By now, I would imagine you have made the decision to buy a CNC machine, have already decided what company you will buy one from, and have already gotten it set up, or else you are standing by the window anxiously waiting for it to be delivered. In the meantime, let's get started on how to use it and some advice about what to do with it. When I first bought my CNC machine, it was shipped to me in several big heavy boxes and I had to put it together. Now I'm pretty handy at building things and it wasn't beyond what I could do. I set it up and took it down at least a couple of times and the first time I put the, uh, the track on it was upside down. Other than that everything went pretty smoothly. After I got it all set up and started reading the manual and instructions I might as well have been reading Chinese for all of the sense I was getting out of it. They were talking about DXF files CNC, CAD, and CAM, and stuff I didn't understand. I knew that a CAD, or a CAD software program, was something. In order to be successful in working with a CNC machine, there are five steps you must learn and follow. Design, CAD, CAM, Control, and Machine. Now design is when you sit automatic curve compensation, automatic control of torch travel direction, control of cut order sequence, export finished shape patterns as DXF files. This is where the CAM program comes in. Now CAM stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. In order for the CAM program to read what you designed in the CAD, DXF is a CAD data format. This is the format that will exchange the CAD file into other programs. In our case, we wanted to go into our CAM program that will run our particular machine. This CAM program is going to define a toolpath called G-Code that will direct the motion of the machine's tools, which in this case is a plasma torch. This toolpath will direct the motion of the torch to... I am living proof that you don't need a huge area to work with a CNC machine and be a metal artist. I have a small shop that I made out of an existing tool shed. When I first moved into my home to house my CNC machine, I built two walls under a carport. Here is how I did this. I was originally going to buy a small shop CNC machine and then I'd put it in my somewhat large carport. I had thought that I might be able to use it there and then just throw a tarp over it when I wasn't using it. Then my wife stepped in and said it would make the house look like a factory and what would the neighbors say? She was trying to be nice and tactful and letting me know when I first set up my CNC machine I didn't have a ventilation system. When I would cut something out I would just have to wait while the plasma dust settled before I could go into the room. I even tried opening the door to air the room out and then my wife complained because the plasma dust was getting all over the carport. It made everything a mess. For those of you who have not experienced plasma dust, it is a very fine microscopic oily substance that that was when I learned about CFM. CFM stands for how many cubic feet per minute that the air will be changed. It is important that if you're going to remove smoke, dust or fumes or whatever from your room that you make sure to have the air completely changed every so often. I also wanted it completely fireproof. I was originally going to use sheet metal to enclose it, but this technique that I used is this. And now I'm going to come over here where my switch is, and I'm turning it on.
air that's circulating under here is picked up through my ductwork and it's shot out. This is what it looks like. This is the dust that comes out. See how it's just black? Okay, when you work in a small shop, a small area like I do, you want to make every inch of your shop uh, usable. So what I did was I had this area here holds a ventilation system and it also holds my plasma cutter and it holds the signal generator and it holds the motor drive box and it holds the torch made height control. And what I did was I, and this is how I look through my window and watch my machine work. But the first thing you do, the first thing you have to do is run tests. I can't emphasize enough of how much better it is when you run a test and make sure everything is working right before you ever cut out the first thing. I had an electrician come and set up 240 voltage here. I had a breaker box specially put in my shop. I hook my hose up to my compressor and I run it down through this little uh, drip deal that I bought at Harbor Freight. It's a little inexpensive thing, but it, you'd be surprised the moisture that that will collect in a day. Then I take my hose and run it up through uh, that filtering system will come out into three different hoses that I have. I have this hose that comes out into this air hose. This is my hose that I'm hooking up to my plasma cutter so that when I get ready to cut, it's all hooked up and it's ready to go. And then I turn everything on in the shop. One thing that I'm going to point out right now is that you never want to forget now I'm going to run the, the machine all the way down to the end so that I can clean the other end. So I'm in my shop right now and I'm going to take it down to there and then I'm going to run it all the way over about halfway. And then I'm going to... If you ever notice that your cuts are looking strange with an unusual slant to them, it is possible that your torch has gotten out of line. Something like this can cause it. Large bolts hold the torch in place. Loosen the two bolts that hold the torch. We're back in the shop and we're going to take this knob that's set at high noon and I'm going to set it right about, I'm going back here and I'm going to hit this plasma again and we'll run one more test here. Okay, now that we've got our got everything ready, we need to set this up to run a test. So we're going to run our arc voltage test. We're going to put this button on read, this button on manual. Okay, now we're going to run our test. We've got everything set up. We're going to hit start. And it starts firing. So the one on the left was the first one cut out. I stopped everything I changed my tip and I put a fresher tip in and then I cut the second line and as you can see it's a really clean cut so that's how important okay, we just ran our test and we had it on read and manual and now you're going to set it so you push one time I couldn't figure out what was wrong with my AVHC it just seemed to be going nuts and nothing I could do would make it do right I ran all kinds of tests and Nothing happened, so I called tech support. I just finished watching what I've done so far in this part two, and that's a lot of information I just gave you. What I've done at this point has been enough to have more than saved you the money of what you paid for this. The other day I got something in the mail from a guy. Well, here, let me read it to you. Dick. I wanted to ask you about your... We have set up our shop. We've built our room for the CNC machine. We set up our CNC machine. We built our ventilation system. We made sure our CNC machine is in good workable condition. And then we ran our tests. We're good to go. Now, let's do some design work and get something to cut. <laughs>